a, a, a good friend of mine, Eleanor Goldfield, if you don't know Eleanor, um, she, she used to run a show called Act Out, a fantastic uh, activist news program. Uh, she has a book called Paradigm Lost. She's a, a, a wonderful spoken word artist. She, is, uh, she, was, she was the lead singer of Rooftop Revolutionary. Uh, highly recommend you check out Eleanor's work. Uh, Eleanor Goldfield just wrote a piece in the Mint Press News, another fantastic uh, journalistic organization, about mutual aids. Um, and right now, um, you know, there's a lot of people that need help uh, that aren't getting help. Food banks are not being, um, they're, they're not being helped as much as you would think. Uh, there's a lot of people out of work. There's a lot of people hungry. And these social programs that are in, that are being put into place are, uh, they are being stressed out. Uh, and they wouldn't be stressed out had the government, had, had, had we had a government and an economic system that doesn't, you know, thrive on um, this this level of competition that it does, this level of callousness that it does. It thrives on it. When, when compassion and understanding um, are put in the forefront of it, this economic system dies, essentially. Um, and as it's dying, it'll try to fight compassion with militaristic force. Uh, that's usually what happens. But mutual aids are, are, are basically the counterpoint to that, right? So Eleanor wrote a, a wonderful piece in Mint Press News that I, uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it at the, at the bottom uh, so you guys can, you guys can uh, read the article for yourselves and, and uh, learn more about mutual aids. And, um, you know, if you're looking for a way to, uh, to serve your community and to, 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 uh, to, to be a, a part of something big, um, you, you know, and you, and you have the time and you have the resources and you have the ability to do it, uh, you know, look into these things. These are these are these are ways that we're all going to help each other. These are ways that we're all going to get through. Uh, and, and if you can't, that's okay too. You know, do do what you can. That's sort of the spirit of the mutual aid. Do do what you can to help your fellow man. Uh, if if that involves, you know, calling your friend and checking up on him, and and saying how you doing, buddy, and and just kind of talking about what's going on and and ha and being you know, a, a vehicle uh, for your friend to kind of verbally and vocally let out some of their mental stresses, then that is part of the mutual aid spirit. You are doing something to help somebody out, you know. Um, so I want to read a little part of uh, Eleanor's article from uh, Mint Press News here. Uh, let me make sure I have this thing set to the right one. Uh, sorry, I know I'm, I'm kind of working with, with some newer technology, so it's going to be a little, little kinky and, um, you know, not, not running as smooth as I would like it to. So here's, here's what she responds to um, in terms of mutual aid, in terms of what mutual aid is, right? Uh, so mutual aid is the medicine that bodies uh, respond well to the antidote to capitalism and the salve for the basic elements of humanity so ruthlessly shanked by our system solidarity community sharing and supporting it's not about charity charity pities mutual aid understands charity distances mutual aid connects that's that's the gist of mutual aid um providing any sort of help that you can for your fellow man. And there's mutual aids all over the country. Uh, you know, it, it, it really cuts through that notion that uh, we are too busy to help each other. Because that's kind of the thing that capitalism likes uh, to, to remind people is that nah, we're just a little bit too busy. We're just a little bit too busy to help each other. We're a little bit too busy to pay attention, right? Um, that's sort of the Andrew Carnegie way of doing it is keep the worker underpaid and overworked so that they don't have time to think that they're being fucked at the end of the day. Um, and mutual aids kind of cuts through that bullshit. And at this point too is, is 
we're just not being paid, period. A lot of people just don't have jobs, period. So we have a lot of time, and now we're just absorbing all this information. Um, and then we're, we're also, on top of that, scared. We're uh, socially distanced. We're isolated, and you know, some people are living alone um, and you know, don't have somebody to bounce things off of, or they're living in, in, in conditions that are not you know, um, completely the best situation to be in. Um, so, you know, this is, this is the time that we kind of need each other. This is the time that we don't have, we don't, we, we don't really need to say that, Hey, I'm too busy to help you out. I'm too busy to, to listen to what's going on to you. I'm too busy to, uh, to, 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 to provide you with any sort of resources or anything like that. Right. Mutual aid cuts through all that bullshit because it's, it's, it's us helping each other out. That's, you know, it's in the name itself, mutual aid. Right. And the way it works is is it's completely decentralized community organization uh, that's particularly has one goal and one mission, and that is to help each other. That's it. Uh, So how do they do that? Uh, You know, every every mutual aid is is a little bit different. You know, uh, there's going to be some members of of our community, uh, some members of our township, our wards, our neighborhoods, whatever it is, uh, that have a little bit more than others do, right? And uh, those that do have a little bit more um, or, or haven't, you know, lost a lot of financial uh, resources in this troubling time give to these mutual aids um, and the mutual aids get it to people that they know need it. Or they connect somebody that is a little bit financially better off with somebody that isn't. Uh, they kind of know that somebody within a community has a skill and their skills are kind of not being utilized in the best way. So they can kind of go to that other person that needs that skill and be like, hey, you two should connect. They become this bridge. That's what mutual aid groups do. And they're decentralized. They're not working with the government. They're not working with law enforcement. Um, they're not working with... You know, and why would they, right? Like, why would anybody work with this government? Why would anybody in a mutual aid group work with a government that's like, no, banks are more important and they need to be fortified. These corporations really need our help. I'm, yes, these corporations make trillions and billions of dollars every single year, but they really need that help to hold on to those billions. Fucking why? Isn't this the reason why you have those billions in the first place? Isn't this the reason why you save and hoard all that money? So when it comes down to an emergency situation, you can actually utilize that money for a better purpose. But they're not doing that. But these mutual aids, um, these mutual aid groups are, these mutual aid groups are coming together to help people within their communities. Um, so Eleanor is in D.C. and her uh, the D.C. mutual aid is uh, led by women of, co- women of color, and uh, they're broken up by wards. And there's a, a, in a lot of these situations, the the driving force, um, you know, the 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 people that kind of organize, um, and their and their purpose is to organize, and they're very good at it, are are usually women of color. The the Black Panthers um, once the survival programs were put into place, uh, the Black Panthers. Uh, survival programs were run by rank and file women of color. That's who was doing it. So you know this is not, um, and and it's not and and look the, and that's part of the thing too, right? Part of the thing is, mutual aids aren't this exclusively different thing. They um, they they've been around for a very long time. Uh, for example, the Black Panther survival program. That was kind of like a mutual aid thing. That was just people in the community coming together to make sure that, you know, uh, people are getting the right medical services. They're getting, their children are getting fed before they go to school. Um, doing things like that, ho- for, uh, paying for hospital rides, uh, or, or am- I'm sorry, ambulance rides, right? Like that was all, that, that's basically what uh, this mutual aid program is. And it's different in, in, um, in every community. There's really no hierarchy, but the common goal, like the, the, the little nuances of everything are a little bit different. Um, they could be working by phone number. You know, some people might go uh, and deliver things by biking. They might uh, have some sort of community center where people can donate to. Every, every little bit is different. The organization elements are a little different, uh, but, they're, but their sole focus is, uh, you know, common, um, 
common good for humanity and solidarity, that we as a community stay together. Um, and, you know, the, the philosophy really comes from um, the, the notion that you would go to your neighbor to borrow a cup of sugar, right? Hey, I didn't have time to run to the grocery store today, and I'm trying to, you know, it's my kid's birthday, I'm trying to make cake, uh, and I'm not going to have time to run to the grocery store and pick them up from school. Can I borrow can I borrow a cup of sugar? And your neighbor's like, fuck yeah, why would, yeah, of course you can. You know, it's the same thing. There have been certain times where, you know, the comedy community has really come through for me and I've done the same thing for them is, oh, you're going through a a difficult time. You need a little bit of help getting through this. Yeah, I got you. I might not have money, but you know what? Let me, let me see if, if, if I can connect to you know, people that follow my work and see if they can't throw five bucks at you. Um, I'll share it on this. I'll do this. Let me make a phone call for you. And people come together and they, and they help each other out. That's what mutual aids are. That's why you should support them if you can. Um, I hope that, I know St. Louis, Florida, DC, uh, a bunch of cities have them. Um, I have, uh, I'm going to use the excuse that I shouldn't use. Um, Things have been crazy, uh, so I have not had the opportunity to look them up, but I am going to. I have the link pulled up here, um, but and and Eleanor is an amazing resource resource for it, um, you know. And I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna read a little bit. Uh, this is the this is this is the end of of Eleanor's article. Again, it's a fantastic read, and there's there's a lot in there that I think you should really check out. Um, and uh, I'll link it. I'll link it in the comments and stuff. Uh, but here's here's the the uh, you know the uh, the conclusion. I I really like the the way that she has put this together. So Arundhati Roy, fantastic writer, by the way. You should check out Arundhati Roy. Uh, Arundhati Roy wrote in a recent article that the pandemic is a portal, and we can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and our hatred, our avarice, our data banks, and our dead ideas our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can walk through it through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. The question our communities must consider is how do we walk through? How do we organize when the system beckons like a Pied Piper to go back to quote unquote normal? How do we bolster these aid networks against internal burnout and external onslaughts of bureaucracy and harassment. These aren't rhetorical questions, but I don't have the answers. I have some answers and more ideas. I know others do too. And it is only in the collective rush of these veins, the pulse of these places, that we'll figure out what works. We'll have to flesh it out, and as it were, and combine our rhythms, our beats, to a deafening roar, a symphony of voices, the will, the power of the people. Mutual aid is our roadmap through the, that portal. How we walk is up to us. How we walk is up to us. And we have to make that choice. Uh, so right now is the time where, you know, if you have the opportunity, if you have the means to, in any which way, in any which way, it does not have to be financial. It could literally be, um, you know, you know a friend or, or an elderly person in your community or, or someone that's just a little scared and they need, you know, some food. You make some food, boom, set it by their doorstep. You know, you need a friend that just needs an ear, stressed out, freaking out a little bit. Cool, give them a call. You know, you need some knowledge. So you go and listen to somebody that that has a little bit of knowledge and goes, hmm, this is interesting. Support each other. Be good to each other. Uh, You know, let's not do the exact opposite of what Andrew Carnegie did. Be the exact opposite of what Andrew Carnegie was. That's what we can do. We can walk through that portal and we can choose to walk through it in a completely new manner, in a manner that is led with uh, 
with compassion, understanding, love, mutual respect, and solidarity. And we don't all have to be these isolated islands of individualistic ruggedness that has gotten us fucking nowhere. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and uh, downloading websites, if that's that's if that's a way that you can you say that, uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me, and you don't have the means if you're in tough times that's totally fine you can download it for free go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it uh or if you do and if you want somebody else to enjoy it you can get it to them as a gift uh that's also a a recommended thing uh but most importantly thank you guys for tuning into this video um thank you guys for for all the people that have already donated that have already become patrons i really appreciate it you guys are amazing and uh until the next video We'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.